Welcome back to Vitamins in Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. All right, in this video we're going to talk about vitamin B2 or riboflavin, the structure of which is shown right here. All right, riboflavin number one is not something that humans can synthesize. All right, any form or derivative of riboflavin that humans use, which in general are going to be FMN and FAD, um, those are going to be derived from dietary riboflavin, meaning that riboflavin is going to be an essential nutrient or vitamin. We have to get it through the diet. We cannot make this complicated molecule. Okay. Now, in the appropriate cells where the FAD and FMN need to be used as coenzymes, the riboflavin is going to be transformed into those two, uh, initially first FMN and then FAD, and it's going to be enzymatic reactions that do that, and we're going to look at those in just a little bit. Okay? But suffice it to say, we have to intake riboflavin through the diet. We can't make this molecule. All right? Now, one thing that I do want to go over because uh, it's a pretty important concept. Um, one thing that happened um, when I was an undergraduate is I took a nutrition class. And the professor that I had was very old school. She was a very old teacher. Um, no disrespect to that, but she said that um, it's absurd to, uh, for people to um, go on an all-meat diet. Um, and the reason she said that was, number one, she was from the old school of thought, and she said, well, how could you have energy not eating carbs? Well, we now know that to be wrong. You can have, you, as long as you're eating things that produce acetyl-CoA in their metabolism, I mean, you're going to get energy, right? Um, the other thing that she said is, how can you get some vitamins like B2? Riboflavin. How can you get B2? B2 is only in plants and, and, um, and fruits and things like that. And I'll agree that riboflavin is higher in plants. However, there's one thing that she didn't realize, and that's that meat, animal proteins, animals use a lot of mitochondria, and there's other uh, portions of the cell also, but mainly the mitochondria. And the mitochondria has a really high amount of enzymes that have FAD and FMN. It turns out that FAD and FMN can actually be in the intestine converted back to riboflavin and absorbed. So you can't go deficient in B2 from eating meat. It's just ways that the old school view of nutrition that the government makes is wrong. All right, so generally when we want to um, have active vitamin B2. It's not going to be riboflavin. All right, we're going to have to convert it to flavin mononucleotide, FMN, or flavin adenine dinucleotide, FAD. Now, what do, what do these uh, flavins do? And by the way, when I use the term flavin, I'm referring to something that has this general structure in it. These are flavins, okay? This triple ring structure up here is called, is called the isoaloxazine ring. Generally, things that have an isoaloxazine ring, which include riboflavin, FMN and FAD, those are called flavins. And flavins have capacity to transfer either one or two electrons. In the next video, we're going to look at NAD and NADH and NADPH and things like that. That can only transfer two electrons. But because of the nature of riboflavins and flavin in general's chemistry, they can transfer one or two. All right? So they can be involved in hydride transfers or radical chemistry, which is pretty important. What are the functions of these various ones? Riboflavin. Not really any functions in humans. Um, riboflavin has to be transformed to have any functions. And as far as anybody knows, riboflavin really doesn't have any functions by itself. It's going to need to be transformed into its two later derivatives, flavin mononucleotide and flavin adenine dinucleotide. All right? And in fact, FMN and FAD are the two active, the two bioactive B2 coenzymes. Okay? And FAD and FMN are going to be used generally for redox chemistry, transferring electrons and so on and so forth. In fact, some of the most notable enzymes that have these are going to be uh, the two complexes in the mitochondria, complex 1 and complex 2. Um, I know for a fact complex 1 uses an FMN, and there are some other proteins, including the flavoprotein oxidoreductases, that are not actual technical complexes in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. A uh, cytochrome P450 reductase has both an FMN and an FAD in it. And then, of course, the alpha keto acid dehydrogenases have an FAD. All right, so uh, here's the metabolism of riboflavin. So let's assume we already have riboflavin absorbed. Let's convert it to FAD or FMN. Well, it turns out riboflavin can react with an enzyme called either riboflavin kinase or flavokinase. 
That enzyme is going to use ATP to phosphorylate riboflavin to make FMN. See this phosphate up here. In fact, that's all it takes to make an active flavin, FMN. All right, some enzymes re require FMN, and that's good enough. We just phosphorylate riboflavin, and we make FMN. But a lot more enzymes use FAD. FAD is a much more commonly used enzyme. And what we're going to have to do to that is take FMN and react it with FAD synthetase. So FMN has a phosphate. FAD synthetase is going to attach an AMP to that phosphate. So if we have a pre-existing phosphate and we attach an AMP to it, we should have two phosphates. So what FAD essentially is, is it's FMN plus adenosine monophosphate where the two phosphates are joined in a phosphodiester linkage. So this is FAD. Now, let's suppose we have dietary FMN and FAD. How do we absorb that? Well, let's start with the simple case, FMN. Let's say we get dietary FMN. It turns out in the intestine there's an enzyme called FMN phosphatase. It's just going to clip up that phosphate to give riboflavin, right? And we absorb that riboflavin easily. Let's suppose we start with FAD. Well, we have an FAD pyrophosphatase, which is going to clip off the AMP, and that's going to yield FMN. Well, we know what happens to FMN in the intestine. FMN phosphatase is going to clip off the phosphate and get riboflavin. So it doesn't matter if you eat FMN or FAD. It's just going to have that, the other groups clipped off, and you're going to get free riboflavin. That's absorbed. We take it into our cells and convert them back to FMN and FAD. So in the intestines, we go from FAD to FMN to riboflavin. In our cells, we go from riboflavin to FMN to FAD. We're just going to reverse it, the process, once we get it into the cells. So if you eat plenty of meat, there's not really any way you're going to be deficient in riboflavin, okay? Because we can take that FAD and FMN and break it down to riboflavin and absorb that.